Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? People will claim to be Jesus. This is one of my favorite prophecies. This is one of the very first ones I ever heard as a youth. Um, Jesus warned us that this would happen 2,000 years ago. This is exactly what we see today. There has been a disturbing amount of people claiming to be Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the Second Coming, or just plain visible God in the flesh. There's been an absolute explosion of these false Christs, but to just name a few, a few. We have Ini Cristo in Brazil, Apollo Quibloy in the Philippines, Moses Hongloy in Kenya, Brian Marshall in Australia, Alan John Miller in Australia, Afrin Mohammed in Malaysia, Wayne Bent in America, Sergei Turop in Russia, David Shalai in England, in Jesus Miranda in South America, Marshall Applewhite in America, Jim Jones in America, Laszlo Tooth in Hungary, Mitsu Matsuyoshi in Japan, Anne Hamilton in Australia, Sung Young Moon in Korea. They are everywhere. Every nation, every continent. They're everywhere, they're all over the place. And to just further comment on Sung Young Moon, I actually met a man at work, that's a Mooney, that joined their organization when he was 16. And he's been with them until he's like in his 50s. And for two years I recorded him, asked him questions, got to know what they believe and teach and found out that he believes he's Jesus and they teach that Adam had sex with Eve and all types of blasphemous stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll leave the link in the description so you can go watch that. It's called An Interview with a Cult Member, The Moonies and Sung Young Moon. It's about three hours long but it's well worth the watch. Many of these organizations have millions of followers, millions, which leads into the next prophecy. Jesus said that many people will be deceived by these false Christs. This is exactly what we see today. Jesus was spot on with his description of today. Many of the men I just previously mentioned have huge followings, numbering in the millions. I mean, Sung Young Moon in Korea, he had millions of followers in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and it, they indoctrinate the children, which carry on. So they're like second, third generation Moonies, and they indoctrinate their children. He used to do mass weddings where he'd marry random strangers of the children, of the members. And it's just this virus that keeps going. This recent one in China called the Church of Almighty God, a woman is leading this organization and she is claiming that she is Jesus returned. And they have millions of believers, millions. Believe this woman is Jesus. Apollo Quibloy in the Philippines, he has his own TV channel, his own private jet, his own mansion, his own compound. Millions of believers. Jose Luis de Jesus Miranda in South America, he got his followers to tattoo 666 on their skin, claimed he's Jesus, claims he's the Antichrist. Once again, hundreds of thousands of believers, many churches scattered all across South America. Sergoy Torop in Russia. Just what Jesus said is what we see today. He not only accurately described something so far ahead in the future which he would have had no way of knowing but he actually describes that people will actually believe these people and be tricked by these people and follow them many people are going to be deceived this is one of the signs which jesus gave to his disciples indicating that he is about to return and this is what we see today how can anyone deny this prophecy And that concludes episode one. Uh, I hope you stick around because we're just getting started. We have hundreds of prophecies to go through. So I don't know how long this is going to take, but you know, leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I hope you stick around for the journey. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth?
the first thing out of Jesus' mouth when he was speaking to his disciples about when he will return, what will be the sign of your return and your, your coming, the first thing out of his mouth was, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ. And will deceive many. First thing out of his mouth, he could have said wars, he could have said this. So that suggests to me the end times are going to be a time of unparalleled deception, lying, false teachers, false doctrines, false messengers, bringing deceptions about God, claiming to speak on behalf of God, saying, we know the way, we know the truth. Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, like the Messiah. People are going to claim to be the Messiah. And there have been, you can line them all up. There has been hundreds of people claiming to be Christ come the second time, just claiming to be God, claiming to be Jesus Christ himself, claiming to be the second coming. <sighs> there have been men, many of them, who claim to be a new Messiah. And tonight we're going to meet three of them, including one in the faraway Philippines who has amassed a flock, he says, numbers in the millions. Poor people who give what little they have to the man they believe is the second coming of Jesus. He's like the most regular guy ever. He's like, yeah, I decided today I am now God. And I, people believe, thousands of people are like, oh my God, he's really God. He said it, so it must be true. You know, when someone makes grandiose claims that they're greater than anyone else in history, the burden of proof is on them to prove it and not on us to disprove it. And my work with people involved with totalitarian groups and religions for the last 35 years um, has shown this time and time again. Sun Myung Moon is not the only person who claims to be the greatest spiritual master uh, on earth. And he's one of thousands and thousands of people actually who claim that. Um, and so the question is if there are thousands of people claiming that role, how do you know one is and the others aren't? And the answer is you can't just take that person's claim you have to look at the evidence. But that's right, don't take my word for it. Let's listen to God. Jesus gave us a clear indicator there would be an increase of what? False Christ! But I want you to focus on the very first thing that comes out of Jesus' mouth. When the disciples ask him, how do we know how close it is? When is the sign? What is the very first thing that he warns people about as an indicator you're in the last days? The first thing out of Jesus' mouth, he says this. Watch out! Watch out, people, that you are not what? Deceived. Why? Because many will come in my name claiming I am he and the time is near. He says, do not follow them. Eventually it came out um, that we were supposed to worship Reverend Moon. Anything you'd like to say, Brian? It's the last time, last time recording, yeah? Anything? You know what I believe? I believe Reverend Moon's the Messiah. I believe Reverend Moon's the Messiah. I Reverend Moon's the second coming of Christ. Reverend Moon's the second coming of Jesus Christ. There we go. No, not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not coming. Reverend back. Moon is the second coming. The third Adam. The third he's, Adam. He's a third Adam. At that time, if anyone says to you, look here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. 
for false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect if that were possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you there he is out in the desert, do not go out or here he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. At the end of the day, the Messiah is here and you can't recognize him because you're using the Bible to beat him over the head with it. There are, okay? there are hundreds of false messiahs yeah, here. But yeah, but this is the true one. How do we know? No. How you, do we know that? Ask God. Ask God, Daniel. I did. I ask did. God and Jesus. I did. Okay, if God and Jesus told you he's not the Messiah, then you believe them, okay? The Bible came from Jesus. It has his very own words and statements. Right. Yeah, so I asked them and they tell me, no, he's, he's not the Messiah. We've got the overall picture. But, you just go word for word for the Bible, but you don't see you don't see the overall purpose. The purpose of the Bible is to lead you to Christ. The purpose of the Bible is to lead you to the Messiah, and you don't do that. It leads you against the Messiah. You read the Bible and you use it to condemn the Messiah. It, it, it leads me against false prophets and false teachers and false doctrine and false yeah, Christ. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It's not the true Messiah. It will lead me straight to Him. Okay, Daniel, you, you just follow Jesus and wait for him to come back, okay? I don't want to argue with you anymore. For I know this, Paul said, that after my departure, savage wolves would come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. There will be false teachers among you, Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Over 25 times in the New Testament alone, God warns us about the potential for deception from Satan, from false teachers, and from within ourselves. In fact, there are few things in Scripture that are emphasized more. Understanding this innate and ever-present susceptibility to deception we must be all the more vigilant concerning the things we believe. I've got some messiahs here I want to tell you about, Brian. That is not really not I know what I believe. I know what you believe. I know about false messiahs. I'm not following you. You think of some kind of brainwash, didn't you? Thank you. I'm not interested. You're the one who needs to find out who is the second time. I'll just, I'll just read it to you. I'll tell you about a few of these. There are three possibilities here. You are so, either the son of God, or you're delusional, or you're a very successful con man. The official coming of the son of God was in April 13, 2005. He was an obscure evangelist from the rural Philippines until 2005 when he announced that God had appointed him Christ on earth. There is no apocalypse in Kibaloi's message, no rapture or final judgment. Instead, he preaches that he is the model of Christianity. And as more people follow his example, God will gradually turn the earth back into the Garden of Eden. Do you perform miracles? For me, the greatest miracle is the changing of that spirit within. But healing the sick, the manifestations oh, yes, of Jesus' yes. powers, you, you, you're able to we do are, that? We have, we have healing. You are healing. healing and miracles happening. After taking his place as the appointed son, Kibaloi's ministry has exploded. He claims to reach six million followers with his satellite TV network, numerous publications, private jet, and personal helicopter. Tell me about that. what you think about AJ. Who, who is AJ to you? He's a, a bringer of truth. 
I feel that he is the Messiah. He's the messenger of God's truth um, to help us wake up. Yes, he is. He is Jesus. And, and you've just discovered that? I've only discovered that, yes. And, uh, since I've been on this path, through AJ's teachings, um, that's how we come to God. AJ, do you do you always tell the truth? Um, I at, I always attempt to, as far as I know it at that time. Yes. So, did you walk on water? No. Did you um, raise Lazarus from the dead? Yes. So, are you saying that you did some sort of miracles, mm -hmm. but not other sorts? Um, there's a few miracles in the Bible I didn't do, but the rest... Of, the rest you did? The rest I did. Like, but most of the miracles involving recovery of people's sight, the recovery yes. of their limbs, but the walking on water is one of the ones I didn't do. Yes. Um, the, another one that I didn't do was turning the uh, water into wine. You didn't? So you couldn't, uh, you couldn't give us a, a, a nice little shot. You want to drop now, do <laughs> No. 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 Folks, we are living in some strange days. But that's not all. That's right, folks. You can also check out right now. Talk about the rise of false Christ messiahs. The Jesus of Siberia. That's right, folks. If you want to travel over there and check it out. Right now, he's got thousands of disciples who think he is Jesus Christ. Because after all, he walks around in a crimson robe and he's got long brown hair. And apparently, that's all you got to do. But get this. Here's the point. His devotees say, direct quote, he radiates. Incredible love. And speaking to him is like an electric shock or like bells ringing. And in case you doubt, the guy's actually stated direct quote, it's all very complicated, but to keep things simple, yes, I am Jesus Christ. The Russian region of Siberia has a forbidding image, a vast and rugged wilderness where icy winds howl and only the hardiest souls survive the bitter winter. Well, Dateline's Kim Trail has just had an altogether different experience. She found sunny skies and what appears to be an idyllic and happy community led by a man claiming to be the son of God. The self-styled Jesus of Siberia, a former traffic cop no less, is ecologically inclined and preaches endless love to his devoted followers. Kim was determined to secure a rare interview. The, th the first thing out of his mouth though was Watch out that no one deceives you. For, for, yeah, but what? My point, Brian. Brian, my point is the first thing out of his mouth was. It's Matthew 24. And the other thing he said, other thing. But I'm saying, they said, what shall be the sign of your return? Yeah, and the first thing out of his mouth was this: Watch out that no one deceives you. Be careful. Be on guard because many shall come. Okay, many. And what are we seeing today? What did I just read you? What are we seeing today? People are claiming to be... So what? You, you say the Reverend Luke's just one of them, but I'm saying he's not. My point is that there are, there are groups out there that yeah, genuinely yeah, believe yeah, yeah. the person they're following is the real McCoy. There are people out there that genuinely believe that he, whoever they're following is the second coming. He is the Christ. He is the Son of God. He is Jesus, you know. Just as just as wholeheartedly as you believe Moon's the second coming. What? That's my uh, point, Brian. It's okay, you make your point. Big deal. Thousands of brides and bridegrooms assembled from 160 different nations of the world are joining in this sacred global wedding. The Unification Church, better known as the Moonies, are a new religious movement that were founded in South Korea in 1954 by a man named Reverend Moon, or to his followers, True Parent. According to the Unification Church Holy Wedding Tradition, our beloved True Parents will lead three cheers of Manse. Let's make our Manse penetrate the entire world. Manse!